one. Best Book Bids podcast brings you David Meltzer, co-founder of Sports Number One Marketing, host of Entrepreneurs Podcast, The Playbook, top business coach, global public speaker, and three-time international best-selling author. David, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate being here and excited to talk uh, with you to inspire others. No worries. Now, for my audience who might not know who you are, uh, take us back to the sort of 20-year-old David. Who are you and um, how, did, uh, how did life unfold to sort of where you are today? Sure. Well, the 20-year-old David lived in the world of not enough. He was born with a single mom, six kids, worked two jobs, had a packed dinner in a paper bag while she filled up turnstiles with greeting cards at convenience stores just so he could eat. And so the 20-year-old David had one objective, to be rich to get out of the world of not enough, the out of the world of why me and get into the world of try me. And all I wanted to do was buy my mom a house and a car. And the reason is, is I grew up so happy. The only time I wasn't happy was because of financial stress. The car would break down. There wasn't food. We had, you know, insecure living uh, situations and that caused a lot of unhappiness but everything else in my life was wonderful. So it was no wonder that at 20 years old, I thought money buys love, money buys happiness. So I'm going to make a lot of money. Yeah. And how did you get into um, the sports marketing agency? How did that all start? Yeah, it's funny. So many kids want to be sports agents. I ran the most notable sports agency in the world called Lee Steinberg Sports and Entertainment. And if you connected the dots backwards, nobody would even believe it's possible what had happened in my career. See, I went to law school to make a lot of money. And when I graduated, I had two job offers, one to be an oil and gas litigator and the other to work in the internet. One paid $150,000 in 1992, which would have easily been enough to buy my mom a house and a car. And the other paid a comp plan of $250,000, uh, but it was 1992. And when I asked my mom what she thought I should do, take the job in the internet or the law job, Without hesitation, she said, the internet's a fad, it's not going to work, don't risk everything, be a real lawyer. And that's where that valuable lesson of just because somebody loves you doesn't mean they give you good advice came in. And I took the job in the internet. 1995, we sold the company for $3.4 I went to the Silicon Valley, raised hundreds of millions of dollars in the wireless proxy server space. And by the time I was 30, I was a multimillionaire. Uh, I ran Samsung's phone division. Uh, with the world's first smartphone, a Windows CE convergence device in 1999. And uh, through that, uh, that is how I ended up in sports. And you wonder why, and I tell people all the time, all you should focus in on is your skills, your knowledge, and your desire, and then make them applicable to your passion, make them applicable to the industry career or job that you may want, but develop the skills, knowledge, and desire without worrying about the backdrop of industry, career, or job. And so when you're the best at graphic arts and you're the best, then you get your choice of whether you want to work in entertainment or sports or history or art gallery. It doesn't matter. So what I did was focus in on those skills, the knowledge and desire, and I was blessed. 48 hours after Lee Steinberg met me, because of my technological background, my financing and, and raising money background, he saw the future of his sports agency needing my skills, my knowledge of what and who, and of course, my desire was aligned, synergistic, and supplementary to the firm itself, the most notable sports agency, which they made the movie Jerry Maguire uh, about our firm. So it was quite a significantly successful firm, and I was blessed to be a CEO of that firm. Yeah, amazing stuff. Uh, thanks for sharing. Yeah, I was just reading that about the Jerry Maguire inspiration. Um, that that's that's a fantastic movie, and uh, that's pretty cool. Now, one thing that uh, I wanted to connect with you as well, we actually got a similar uh, life's mission. So, reading your bio, you actually want to empower over one billion people. That is my mission too. Uh, with Best Book Bits, the home of the world's largest free book summary website, I'm on that. I'm on the path of educating a billion people and one of the things you want to provide is value and it's the same thing that i want to do too so um that's pretty cool uh tell me a little bit about uh more about your mission on empowering sort of a, a billion people to be happy yeah so as i transitioned from the world of not enough into a world of just enough uh where i was buying things to be happy buying more things to be happy buying different things to be happy buying things to impress people i even bought things to impress people i didn't like uh, I made a quantum shift in my life from that emptiness 
into a world of more than enough of abundance, of understanding that if I appreciated what I had and it added value, it would expand. If I acknowledged it and let it go or gave it away or allowed it to be taken, then I could ask for more. And this world of overwhelmed abundance, of more than enough, of living between limitlessness and infinity, uh, made me realize that I had a capability of teaching people to teach people, to teach people. Meaning that if I can find a thousand people like you, Michael, that I know will empower a thousand to empower a thousand to make a lot of money, to help a lot of people and have a lot of fun, they will be happy. And my mission in life is to find a thousand people like yourself and utilize daily practices and values, the books that I've written, the guides that I've given. I do free trainings every Friday for over 21 years. We have over 50,000 people registered every week that come and join us. And it's been a blessing to find people like you that a thousand times a thousand Michaels equals a million. A million times a thousand Michaels equals a billion. We can easily get there to create this collective consciousness of abundance. Yeah, it's absolutely happening. And it's great that... um your story's gone from one aspect and then you, you've made that quantum shift, as you say. Uh, touch on a little bit about, I believe, did you go bankrupt? Is that right? Or you had a rapid spiral yeah, down bankruptcy? So two, two years before uh, uh, is when I had my quantum shift. But in 2008, uh, I lost over $100 million. Uh, and you know, with my new mindset, my new heart set, and my new handset, I had every capability of being able not only to handle the bankruptcy, but take the lessons, learn from them, and accelerate and expand to a whole nother level. Uh, And so I'm blessed today to be healthier, happier, worthier, and wealthier than I've ever been uh, because of what I learned through that quantum shift, that process of from the world of not enough to just enough to just enough to more than enough of changing my mindset, my heart set, and my hand set in order to effectuate this completely Uh, ignorant, humble existence that I live instead of the ignorant, arrogant existence that I lived previously. Yeah, uh, uh, fantastic. Thanks for that. And um, one of the things you talk about with your platform of um, the four overreaching principles, which is sort of gratitude, empathy, accountability, and uh, and effective communication. Can you talk a little bit about uh, how that sort of came about and more, more about that and unpack that? Yeah, so that absolutely very critical to my business and my life is the one thing I tell every intern and employee, the only thing you need to leave here with is the capability of gratitude, accountability, effective communication, and empathy, of course. So uh, the idea came when I was at my bottom. Two years before I lost everything, uh, my wife threatened to leave me, told me I was going to die, that I was not taking stock in who I was, and I definitely wasn't taking stock in who I wanted to become. My immediate reaction was anger. Uh, was to to attack, uh, but as the next day came and I thought about you know what I was going to do, I was reminded by a jacket that my father had given me six years earlier for my thirtieth birthday, a jacket with no pockets, a jacket when he gave to me, I told him I hated him because why would he punish me on my birthday by giving me a jacket i can 't wear and he told me it 's to remind you. That money can't buy you love or happiness. It's to remind you that you don't want to be the richest man in the cemetery. It's to remind you you're just like me. And I told him at that time, six years before this, I said, Dad, I'm nothing like you. I'm a, you're a liar, a cheater, a manipulator, overseller, back-end seller, and I hate you. And there was this jacket six years later, shining and staring at me. And I realized at that moment, That number one, I do not hate my father. Two, I do not hate my wife. But three, I hated myself. And so understanding in that humble moment that I was the liar, I was the cheater, I was the manipulator, the overseller, the back-end seller, I decided to take stock in who I was and what I wanted to become. And I spent an entire day thinking about these key elements and values in my life. And one was gratitude would give me perspective. It always had. Empathy would give me peace through forgiveness, which I always had. Accountability would allow me to be a fast learner, to ask myself, what did I do to create this circumstance? And what am I supposed to learn from it? And then finally, 
the ability not only to effectively communicate with others, but to believe and to have faith that there's something bigger than me, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source that loves me more than I love my own children, and that I would have faith to effectively communicate through that source, appreciating, acknowledging, and asking for more to give it away to others, to empower others, to empower others through gratitude, forgiveness, accountability, and effective communication. Powerful stuff. Yeah, powerful. And it's amazing how those sort of life lessons come about and you can sort of piece them together with the knowledge and, and, you know, turn them into a book as well. I want to talk about sort of when your first book came out and sort of the inspiration for, for that too. Yeah, I was so blessed. You know, I've been teaching for many years, every Friday doing these Friday trainings. And I had one particular guest that came in and said, Dave, you need to write a book about this. These trainings need to be put into a book. You have, you know, these great key elements and these great principles that you teach. And the idea was that we could take and teach people how to imagine. Uh, You know, imagination and curiosity are two of the things that I develop within the construct of my family and my profession because technology has now exceeded our imaginations and we need to make sure that we're maturing and, and, and manip- uh, in, in building our imaginations and curiosity. So I take you through the ability to, one, know what you want to imagine it, to use these principles to become inspired, and then to strategically discipline and awareness to make it a reality. What do I mean? I teach you to take nothing and make it a possibility by dreaming about it. I make it a probability by teaching you how to be in spirit or inspired by it. And then I put through the strategy, discipline, and awareness to take that probability and make it your perspective or your reality to materialize it. And so I wrote a book in 2013 called Connected to Goodness, which goes through the seven principles and the four key elements in order to make everything you imagine a possibility, become inspired to make it a probability, and to actually materialize it as your reality or perspective. Yeah, amazing. And uh, I believe you've got that even book uh, downloadable for free online for people too. Is that correct? Yeah. So for all of your community, please email me, david at dmeltzer.com or just you know, Google me. You'll you'll find I'm happy to you know send send my book uh, to you. I've written three other books as well. One with Jack Canfield, uh, creating the life you love, the uh, soup, chicken soup for the soul author. I also have uh, compassionate capitalism, and then finally my latest book with McGraw Hill, game time decision making, using five daily practices in order to prioritize your life and live by applying your why, not searching for it. Yeah, talk to me about game time making decision. Is that a book about um, uh, coaches and, and sport, or is that more of an analogy uh, for sort of making yeah. uh, you know laser focused <laughs> decisions? Yeah, just like the movie Jerry Maguire, which was extremely pro- popular years ago. I use the backdrop of sports to teach the lessons. So I use and analogize the greatest coaches, players, sports situations to show how we make decisions that are aligned with synergistic or supplementary to our values, to who we can help and who can help us, to how specifically to make those decisions, uh, integrating time and thought, and then how to prioritize, you know, to understand what's most important. Prioritization is a necessity. Prioritization is the antidote to procrastination and to paralysis. Prioritization is a superpower that allows us to make those decisions in an efficient effective and statistically successful way and if you do the what the who the how and the now in game time decision making you will apply your why you will live in spirit you will be inspired allowing everything to come through you for others to make a lot of money help a lot of people and have a lot of fun yeah fantastic i'm going to play a little game with you i'm going to read some of your famous quotes and i want you to unpack it or just talk about sort of first thing that comes to mind so if you're ready for the game i'm going to read some of your quotes love it and i've never done this good yeah cool so uh quotes from david uh when you believe that there is more than enough of everything for everyone you have no problem receiving and giving everything away yeah so this is infinity so when you have faith that you live in infinity and limitlessness You have no problem, obviously, giving everything that you have 
uh, but you also have no problem receiving because you don't feel like it's a quid pro quo, that it's a negotiation or a trade, that if you receive something, someone else is going without. See, most of the people are kind at nature, and so they don't like to receive because they feel like they're taking away from something. No, you're not. You're just continuing speeding up the expansion of the universe by giving and receiving at the same time. Amazing. Quote number two, gratitude is the most powerful emotion in the world. If you can train your brain to be grateful for every single thing that happens, when it happens, you'll be the happiest person on earth. No doubt. There's light, love, and lessons in everything. And gratitude is the superpower that allows us to perceive the light, the love, and the lessons in every person, place, situation, or thing. And so we want to practice and be disciplined in finding the light, the love, and the lessons and determining whether it's worth our time or not to find it. And if not, allow it to fall away. But it's super powerful. Yeah, powerful stuff. And uh, quote number three, I like this one where you say, nobody starts where they want to be. It's to start angling towards what you want. I love that. So there's three laws. One's the law of gravity. So although you may not be where you want to be, you're exactly where you're supposed to be at the right place at the perfect time. See, the earth is spinning, hurling, and rotating at such a tremendous force. You wouldn't be able to stand here if you weren't at the right place at the perfect time. You have everything you need, food, water, air, and sleep. You have it all. Now focus in on it. Then use the law of Goya. Get off your ass and angle to what you want. Use pain and setbacks and failures, not as punishment, but as promotion and protection, angling you to a better place in a better situation. And if you use the law of gravity and the law of Goya, you then can execute on the law of allowance and attraction, creating a void so big that the universe fills it with whatever you ask for. And that's why your health is so important because if you're healthy, you get as many wishes as you want every day. But if you're unhealthy, you'll only have one wish. So that becomes a non-negotiable priority to me to be healthy so I can execute on the law of gravity, Goya, and allowance. Yep, spot on, spot on. And the last one, which I uh, found on a post-it note, which looks really cool, it says, be kind to your future self and do good deeds. My favorite quote in the world. Uh, it's the testament to faith that if you know there is a source, an omniscient, all-powerful, all-knowing source that loves you as much as you love your children, then you have no other duty, no other activity than to be kind. And all we're doing by not being kind is creating interferences, voids, shortages, and obstacles between us and what we already are. See, you don't have to go get happy, go get healthy, go get wealthy, go get worthy. I am happy. I am healthy. I am wealthy and I am worthy. What am I doing to interfere with it? Well, kindness will clear that interference and allow things to come to you more rapidly and accurately. So be kind to your future self and do good deeds. Thank you, David. That was, uh, that was the round of, uh, unpacking the quotes now talk to me a little bit about sort of your podcast uh the playbook when does it start and um yeah what, what's it all about so i've have one of the top podcasts in the world i have entrepreneurs the playbook and now i have sports and entertainment playbook with blue wire so i have a studio at the wind hotel in the lobby i have a studio at sofi arena of <laughs> sofi stadium uh and my office is there as well but the idea is that I want to capture the spirit of excellence, the billionaires, millionaires, entrepreneurs, celebrities, athletes, and entertainers, finding the common denominator, the spirit of excellence, and letting people share their journey experience, dummy tax in order to effectuate accelerating other people with the playbooks to success, to playbooks to make more money, to help more people and have more fun. So we have over a thousand total episodes between the entrepreneur and sports side of things. Uh, and it's one of the top uh, podcasts in the world. So download the playbook, pick your favorite billionaire, millionaire, entrepreneur, celebrity, athlete, or entertainer, and learn their playbook to success. Yeah, for more audience, go out there and definitely check it out. It's uh, lots and lots of content. Now, I know you're short on time and you've got to run, so one last question before you do take off. Uh, if you were to host a dinner party with three people from the past, dead or alive, who would they be? Uh, what would you serve them or where would you take them? So three people from the past. <laughs> no, man, I, I would definitely take Jesus. Yeah. Uh, and I, I'd uh, ser serve him wine and bread uh, at a big table and uh, 
and uh, you know, just one on one though. I, I I think if if I could get some ultimate truths from Jesus Christ, it would be amazing. Uh, I would take Einstein, and uh, I'd take him through McDonald's drive through, and uh, I would like to get his take on a lot of the relativity that exists on Earth uh, and how quantum uh, applies to so many of the different things that exist today. So Einstein and, and Jesus Christ. And then uh, I think, you know, the, the last person would be my father um, yeah. who passed. Perfect. And Jesus, I, Einstein. I think of the Las Vegas. I think of yeah. the Las Vegas for a prime rib because that was his favorite. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Um, David, thanks for being on the show. One last question before we take off. I'll steal this one from Tim Ferriss. If you had a billboard with one message you wanted to show the uh, the world, what would it say on that billboard? It's easy. Be kind. Yep. Perfect. David, thank you for being on the Best Book Bits podcast. I'll let you get back with the day. And uh, to my audience, go out and follow David. Check out his podcast. Read his books. Uh, a man and inspiration. Great speaker. And yeah, thanks for all the work you've done. And I look forward to many more great things from yourself in the future. So David, thanks for being on the show and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you so much. Take care. No problems at all. Bye. Bye-bye.